Hello, hello, David here once again with another video. Today we're going to be covering round six, no, round five, round five of the 2021 Charlotte Open. If you haven't watched the other three videos, go back and do that. Actually, don't go back and do that because I'm boring. So don't waste your time watching those videos. I'll just do a quick recap. Round one, two, and three. I won those games. Not that interesting, I don't think. Round three, I definitely should have lost my opponent. Just did not take advantage of, of beating me. And so somehow I'm at three and a half out of four rounds. I took a half point by in round four so my daughter could play in the Scholastic Tournament. And now we are at round five. I've got the white pieces. At this point, only one person has four points. So a perfect score so far. And three of us have three and a half points. So board one of my section, the four and other three and a half person, and I'm playing um, my opponent here who also has three and a half points. So. If I win, I've got the potential to either tie, be tied for first, or at least be half a point behind first place. And at that point in round six, I would play for top place. So this round is quite uh, important for the final standings to determine who's going to still be around the top of the tournament and control their own destiny. And so with this game, I've got the white pieces. And we're going to get started. I'm a 1e4 player, as stated before. And my opponent played c6, indicating that they want to play the Karakan. And I was actually pretty happy to see this. And not necessarily because the Karakan's bad or that I think I'm going to win against the Karakan, but I was excited to try out uh, my new line that I've been semi practicing. Um, against it which is bishop c4 and this is called the hillbilly attack and well you'll you'll see the, the point of this after d5 which is standard moves uh we have bishop c4 taking this is the best option here and now queen h5 um immediately threatening you know some some issues here notice that the bishop can't block because we can just take this because the pawn is pinned to the king so Black doesn't have this move. So there's two options here. They can either go with g6, e6, or g6. And my opponent decided to go for g6. So I'm quite happy to do this. So queen h4, knight f6. This is all standard stuff. In fact, for the first 11 moves, I didn't lose any time off my clock because this is all, I already know the line so well here. So knight f3, just threatening to get the pawn. Now my opponent went bishop g7 here and this is fine. Um, typically, most people will go like bishop f5, trying to hold on to this pawn. And then we get what happened in the game, which is f3 takes, knight takes. And just white's development in this line is just incredible. Um, after bishop g7, castle, castle, and then d4. And this just transposes back to what actually happened in the game. But yeah, Carol Khan players just aren't uh, really... <laughs> expecting to get these type of positions uh, when they're playing the Karakhan. So, uh, with white's pieces really directed at the king. So, anyway, so what happened after bishop g7? I went ahead and played f3, we take, we castle, my opponent played bishop f5, and now d4, and again, we've just transposed back into that, the, the other line that I, that I showed you. After knight b to d7, Bishop h6, and again, here, I haven't used any time off my clock. If anything, I have more time than what I started with, with the five-second increments. Meanwhile, my opponent has taken quite a amount, some time to think about each move, because obviously I'm just blitzing out moves. I'm up walking around while, while he's thinking about what to play. So, um, and obviously, again, as I stated, Karakon players just don't, don't expect to get into... Uh, a game where they're king size under attack so fast. So, um, so yeah. So psychologically, I I definitely have the advantage here. My opponent feels like has to know that I'm in prep, and so he's just trying not to uh, to blunder in something. And here, my opponent plays knight g4, and this move is um, 
yeah, can't be good for black. Um, I was suspecting maybe something like queen b6, uh, maybe even c5 here, but not, uh, maybe even e6. But e6 can get a little tricky. Um, if black was e6, then we go h3, and we're already threatening um, g4 here. So black does have to be very careful um, with how, how they go about their 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 plans but knight g4 definitely can't be right here um and so we just take on g7 and then i play h3 and after knight e3 i am completely happy here i'm still moving pretty quickly at this time I, I, i'm taking a little bit of time to think here on this particular move uh unfortunately i lost my score sheet so i don't actually have my my time stamps but um but i i didn't use too much time here and and i probably should have um, the move that I played was g4, which is actually probably not that great. But I had considered rook f2, but after rook f2, I thought maybe my opponent would go knight f6. After g4, bishop e6, we take. And knight comes into g5, queen g7. I, I just, yeah. This is this is probably actually pretty good here because I can just take on f6. He takes f6, and then obviously that, that's checkmate. But um, but yeah, probably what my opponent should do here is just go bishop c8, and after rookie one, just go back here and and black's probably okay here, and that was probably the more correct way to play. This is to start with this rook f2 move, but I knew I already had the psychological advantage. I moved pretty quickly here to play g4, so I'm sure my opponent still thought I was in some type of a prep. And honestly, he talked himself out of playing, the, I believe, the most critical move, which is to take the rook. He should have taken the rook. I was going to take the bishop here. This was the plan. And after knight e3, take on g6, play knight g5, and then take the pawn here. And 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 this was the plan. I black still has to be better here, but there's black's got some uh got to walk a pretty uh Decent type group here to, to actually hold on. So, but anyway, um, after knight takes f1, I considered rook takes f1, but after bishop e6, uh, white's pretty much just done here. There's there's really nothing. Everything goes away uh, for, for black or for white, and I don't have any type of attack. And yeah, this is. This is just no good. So, so I at least have to try and take the bishop. I think my opponent after the game said after after knight takes f1. If I took the knight, he wanted to play knight f6. And yeah, I just thought this was weird. I would take here. And yeah, I'm I'm just not. Um, yeah, I, I I didn't really believe that. So. Anyway, my opponent talked himself out of this probably because I was moving so quickly. He's thrown off by the opening. I mean, it was very clear he's thrown off by the opening. And I mean, the fact that there's only one good move for, for black here, which isn't that hard to find, but it can look a little scary if you're getting your king side ripped open. Um, yeah, you know, this, this can... Can be nerve wracking. I mean, we have ideas that we're gonna fork on on e6. So, so I, I can see why my opponent talked talked himself out of it. So after g4, my opponent played bishop. Bishop takes c2, and this just allows, um, yeah, the game to be won here. After knight g5, with the threat of just checkmate here, and my opponent can't even play a move like h5. Because then I have rook takes f7 check. And if rook takes, well, we have knight e6. 
winning the queen. And that is pretty much it. Why you can't play h5. But my opponent plays knight f6, trying to guard the h7 pawn. But now we have a classic uh, exchange sacrifice where we take the knight. Again, the pawn can't take because we have checkmates. Um, really, I mean, the best move is to, uh, you, you can't take the rook, but then you're just basically down a piece. So my opponent played king takes f6, and up to this point, I have only used six minutes for from two hours. I've only used six minutes for the first 11 moves, no time at all, because I, I already knew those, those moves. Um, and in this position, I used seven minutes to find a mate in two. So... Take this moment right now, pause the video, see if you can find the mate in two faster than I did. Did you find it? I'm sure you did, because you're a much better chess player than I am, and the mate in two is 96 check. The knight's guarded by this. The pawn stopped the king coming here. The knight guards this square, and the queen's attacking the king this way. The only move is g5. And it walks into me right here. Now, why did it take me so long to find that move? Glad you asked. Even if you didn't ask, I was looking at so many different variations here. I'm going to show you what I was looking at. Okay. So I was looking at queen f2 check. <clears throat> this was a line I looked at. If king takes, then I take the knight. The king's only got one square, so we go here, and then we eventually checkmate the king. And I thought, well, that's good, but what happens if the king goes to g7? Well, then I thought I could just take on f7, and then we have the fourth threat still, or I at least win the knight. <clears throat> If the queen or king moves. Probably the queen would move. So then we could take this knight. So I thought that was good. But I wanted something a little better than that. So then I started looking at. Where is it? And I started. I wanted this to work. But after king g7. I just couldn't find anything. There's just. It's just too. There's, there's nothing here. Okay, so then I looked at the other knight coming in. Okay, so I looked at this knight coming in. I mean, this is everything I'm calculating over the board, right? And so I looked at this. If the knight takes, knight takes. But then the king goes to g7. I was like, oh, that king going to g7 is always a, a pain. So then I looked at, well, what if I take king goes g7, knight takes f8, queen takes f8. This has to be good. Rookie one, bishop takes, takes. Yeah, this has... This can't be too bad, but I didn't like this either. I was like, there's gotta be something else. And then finally I looked at this knight takes f7 check and I went, wait a minute, I can take the queen. My bishop guards the knight. And that's when, it wasn't until I looked at this move that I found that the knight could actually go here. For some reason, my brain did not see the knight could go here first. And as soon as I saw knight takes f7, I realized if the knight goes here, the knight guards the g7 square. And that's always been the pain in the tuchus for this move, queen f2. Because I thought, oh, this is forced mate. Or at least I win a piece, right? If the bishop comes back or something like this, like I can take here, you take, I take. Okay, and now, now I'm winning. So knight e6 after I saw knight f7. So just to, just to prove the point that sometimes you do have to take time to think, don't play the first move that pops into your head, which for me was queen f2. Instead, take your time, find the moves, figure out the pain point. King g7 was always the pain and all these other variations to get away from me. So I finally found the move that stopped king g7 and my opponent resigned after knight e6. So that is the round five game short video hope you enjoyed it round six is in the next video which will come out tomorrow so make sure you subscribe to the channel click the little bell icon wherever it is yeah i mean you guys know youtube by now i don't need to tell you this so 
you get alerted when that video comes out. Round six, I have to tell you, is the second best game that I'm, the second game that I'm most proud of. The second most, whatever, whatever I'm trying to say. You guys know what I'm doing. Proud of that game. It's the second game in the list of the top five that I'm proud of. So, with that being said, thanks for watching, and I'll see you tomorrow. At this point, just for the record, at the end of this round, I'm tied for first with one other player, both at four and a half out of five. And so round six will determine who takes the lead in the tournament, if at all, or if it's going to be a multi-way tie for first. So stay tuned for that game. It's quite interesting, very sharp, very tactical. There's a peace sacrifice, so you gotta you gotta tune in for that one. And I'll see you in that video. Goodbye, thank you.